Hey, welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. Before we get into the segment, by the end of this video, I want you to do a few things for me. First of all, if you like the video, hit the like button. Please do. If you don't like it, hit unlike. It's okay. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Sometimes, as Jimmy Dole would say, you find yourself unsubscribed and you need to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell right next to it so you can be notified when a new video is being dropped. Whoop, there it is. And more importantly, the Super Chat will be on for this segment. So if you want to donate uh, toward the efforts of Bob TV, that's freely up to you. I do have a job, but any amount will help toward the growth of this channel. And more important, let us help you help us by introducing you to a program. There's a link down below that says Equal Justice for All. You're going to click that video link, and there's some educational tutorial about a phenomenal program in America that is really making equal justice a reality for every citizen. So this program is phenomenal. Um, the proceeds from you participating in the program will go back, 10% will go back into um, the Bob TV YouTube channel. So anyway, my name is Robert Brown with The Rob Report. Let's get into it. Blue collar, Blue collar, white collar, white collar, black professors, black professors white scholars, scholars politicians, politicians, Dalai Lamas. Everybody get a whole wide world need hope if I be honest. I'm in that number. Hey, good day. Welcome to another episode of the Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. And today in this session is what I normally call Meet the Nation. That's going to be a weekly show where I actually break down meet the nation, I mean, uh, meet the press and face the nation and go through that goobly god bull crap that they talk about on that show. But today on The Rod Report, we're going to talk about a young lady that has not been talked about. She's been kind of thrown out there, but nobody really, 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 well, I can't say that. Some people are taking her serious, and I'm one of them. That's Marion Williamson. Now, I told you about Marion Wilson uh, a couple of months ago, and I told you about a, um, a monkey wrench in the program, so to speak. Here you have a lady who actually, even though her campaign YouTube channel doesn't have that many people, I got more people than her, and that's, that's not bragging, but her social media presence is bigger than anybody that's running even Bernie Sanders. Um, Marion Wilson is a, Williamson is a, uh, what they call a motivational speaker, a self-help guru, a spiritual advisor, and um, a good one at that. Now, I've been listening to Marion Wilson for, Williamson for a while, way before she got hooked up with Oprah, way before all that, because... A lot of her books, her teachings, uh, and her audio, you should take some time to take a look at it. By me being a pretty much spiritual, when I say spiritual, is I try to let my spirit take some more of a lead in making my decision in life versus my brain or my body. I try to listen to my heart. That's what I mean by spiritual. Now, um, me being a spiritual person, I'm always feeding myself on um, spiritual teachings that will better me. Uh, I don't neglect science or nothing like that. Um, you know, I believe there's something that created the science. That's just me personally. And, uh, I think there's something bigger than science, but I don't neglect science. Okay. And Marion Williamson, she doesn't do that. Plus, if you got a lady that can be that comfortable showing her feet <laughs> in a press release, then that means she's a confident woman. Let me tell you something. One of the most noble things that my pastor did one day when I was at church, uh, he wanted to show that he's in service of us. He said other pastors, they try to get their congregation to worship and serve at their feet. But I want to worship and serve at your feet. I'm here to serve you. And he literally took a point out the Bible where Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And um, he did that. He washed the feet of his church members. And man, when he got over to my feet, man, 
Man, I didn't see, I didn't expect him to do this. Uh, I mean, it was out the blue, so my feet were funky, number one. My toenails need to be clipped. I probably had some toe jams in the middle of that, and I probably was not the only one. The other people probably had the same thing, too. And for this man to take a basin and wash our feet to show that he's humble to you. You know how humble it is to get down and wash somebody's feet, man? What they got to do with Marion Wilson? <laughs> well, she's humbling herself because she don't need to be president. She's doing good. She's well-off author. Um, she go out and do these speakings. And, and a lot of her speakings are um, what they call... Um, um, connection speaking or apology tours for white culture and how they treated black culture and things like that so um, and she's one of the foremost out of all the candidates that support reparations she's been supporting reparations before she even ran before she even ran and it was other things on top of the fact that America in her eyesight will not go forward it'll probably stand still or go backwards if they don't take care of giving slaves and their ancestors they just do reward. So she felt the need and the compelling need to um, run for president. Now I'm gonna go into a couple of videos concerning her and her website because I want you to get to know Marion Williamson. And that is what Meet the Nation is gonna be all about even though you see the Rob Report logo um, over here. Uh, Meet the Nation is going to be about introducing you to people in this world uh, from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, and in the middle, it doesn't matter. I want to introduce to America real people trying to do real things for real people. And I believe Marion Wilson is one. I don't think she's trying to get a cabinet position. Uh, she don't need a cabinet position. I don't think she'll take a cabinet position because you got to understand her aura. You got to understand her flow, her spirit, her connection is not a cabinet. <laughs> she literally want to bring integrity back to the White House. And she really goes deeper than color or deeper than uh, economics. She acknowledged color, she acknowledged economics, but she knows, she believes the real root to the real reason why these things are not the way they're supposed to be is because we're not looking into our spiritual self. You know, we think with our brains and not with our hearts, so to speak. And oftentimes we allow things to get in our heart, to corrupt our heart, to make us to do the things that we do. America heart has been, government heart has been so corrupt that we feel comfortable doing the things we do all across the world. It's, it's, it's nothing, to bat, it's not even a bat to eye to go and try to do regime change in Venezuela. It's not a bat to eye to get rid of a dictator and kill him and just so we can take over the oil and the diamond and things like that to America. This thing has become mundane. We're the biggest bullies and the biggest, biggest terrorists in the world and she realized that and she's trying to do whatever she can to dial us back. Now stay with me on this because like I said, this is me, the Rob Report, me, the nation edition. I want you to meet her. Now, I'm gonna get a couple of videos concerning Marion Wilson, Williamson. I keep saying Wilson. And uh, let's take a look at her. Now, when she announced that she was running for president, it was after one of her motivational speeches. Powerful speech, you get a chance to go look at it. I think it's like 45 minutes long. Go look at it, it's a powerful speech. And then at the end of the speech, this is what happens. The race for 2020 is on, and our next guest is the one with the largest social media following of any declared candidate so far. Marianne Williams, Democratic candidate for president, best-selling author, and activist. You know, people ask me when I began this campaign, how are you going to dumb it down, Marianne? How are you going to turn it into a soundbite or into a bumper sticker? Like, I'm supposed to get shallow for people. I don't want to get shallow for you. You get deep with me. There are millions of American children who go to school in classrooms where there are not adequate school supplies. So how can they possibly compete with the clout of corporate lobbyists that are flooding our Congress and our White House every single day? These are serious times. We need to be serious people. 
We have deep problems and we need to be deep thinkers. We need a whole uprising of consciousness among the American people who know that we're not going to acquiesce to an economic system which puts short-term profit maximization for these corporations before advocacy for people and planet. Why? Because it's wrong. In order to override the real assaults, the systemic assaults on our democracy, we need to do more than fight. We have to fall in love again with what this country can mean. This is not something that any one person can go to Washington and just make happen. New paradigm leadership is not about saying, I'll do it, send me to Washington. New paradigm leadership is where the leader is holding the space for the brilliance of others. Our democratic values and our human values matter more than anything else. We need more in our generation than small random acts of kindness. We need huge strategized acts of doing the right thing. There is still a debt to be paid. We need to pay reparations for slavery. We have to cultivate peace. We have to look at peace building as seriously as we look at preparedness for war. They have to work together. We have to wage peace, not just prepare for war. And we need to get into the consciousness of peace building if we want this world to even be habitable 50 to 100 years from now. I'm asking you to join with me for a year of talking about things that matter. Let's talk about what it would mean to have a massive realignment of investment in the direction of America's children. Let's talk about what it would mean to actually wage economic and racial justice in this country. Let's talk about what it would actually mean to end mass incarceration. Let's talk about what it would actually mean to fight climate change. And let's take responsibility for the fact that none of that stuff's going to happen unless all of us rise up. All of us become the immune cells in this society and say, Hey, that which is happening stops now. Our democracy has stage four cancer and all that the traditional politicians are offering is a topical appointment. It's time for an entirely new kind of thinking. The old thinking got us into the ditch we're in. It's not the mindset that will get us out. And it goes without saying, that's why I'm running for president. We need to show up in our time like others have shown up in theirs. It's our time. We need to do this, and we need to do it now. That was an amazing video. Very inspiring. And um, she's right. Our country has stage four cancer, and it's not looking to... It's not trying to do anything to save its own life. It's doing whatever it can to advance the cancer. It's like a person that's on a rampage right now. He, he's the type of person that you're going to have to kill me because I'm not going to get myself up. And that's how America is right now. Now, we're going to go into her platform because you know me, I'm all about policies, not lofty words. Now, you get, some, get a chance to go and listen to that full speech, man, because, you know, she sprung that on the audience at the end. She did not spring that right at the beginning. She went into our normal motivational, her guru thing. She was doing her thing, lifting up people with her speech and everything. Incredible uh, motivational speech. I, 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 I drew you to go take a look at it. It'll pump you up, uh, get you psyched up. But I didn't know she was going to drop that at the end. Now I realize I've seen this before and that was in the campaign video that I just released to you. Now she is running for president. She needs to be on that debate stage. Just like Tulsi needed to be on that debate stage, she needs to be on that debate stage. And according to the whack behind polling that's going on, because I don't know who in the world they polling. N let me tell you something about Poland. Polands are so whack because you don't know who they polling. You don't know who they talk to. They could have been talking to some some people 65 years to 100, asking a question of who you think should be the um, next president, and they all say Joe Biden. It, look, you poll 60, 60, 60, 60 to 100 years old. That's not a representation of all America. Majority of people in America are uh, under 50 now. So come on, dude, you know, so polling can be skewed. And according to this polling, Marion Wilson, Williamson is ahead of Tulsi Gabbard. Now, you know how I feel about Tulsi Gabbard at this moment, based on her grit and based on her ability to talk the same language that uh, Marion Wilson talk about, and that's uh, restitution, recompense, 
um, going after the establishments, um, not holding, not not kissing the DNC behind, even though she's a Democrat, uh, not listening to whatever they tell her to do, say or do. You know, right now she's beating Tulsi Gabbard. I don't know how, but she is. But that's a good thing. So what we want to do, and I know you told some people saying, no, that's not a good thing. No, that's a good thing. Uh, believe me. We need Tulsi on the stage. She hit her number, she'll be on the stage. Yang hit his number, be on stage. I don't know who Leon Castro hit his number. Honestly speaking, I don't care. <laughs> um, Cory Booker, I, you know, he probably hit his number, but it was probably by hook and crook. Same thing with... Um, um, anybody else running? Booty Jag, uh, Booty Judge, whatever his name, by hook or crook. You know, so we need to get Marion Wilson on the stage because she bring a lot to the table. And I'm going to show you some of the things that she bring to the table that's, that are serious issues with serious aspect of different communities in the United States. <laughs> All right, now here we have Marion Wilson at the Los Angeles The Conscious Life Expo. And she's gonna talk about progressive activism on this panel. Let's listen to Marion Wilson. At the deepest level, it's, there's not a contest between transforming our personal lives and transforming the globe. It's not either or, it's both and. And what's being demanded of us, I believe now, the challenge of history, is yes, that we be kinder to each other, but also that we be kinder to those children in Yemen. Right. It's the same work. We don't get out of one because we think that we're being cool a, 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 in uh, addressing the other. And all of the issues of personal transformation, which all of us simply by being here this weekend already clearly ascribe to, actually must be applied on a larger global level or none of us will survive. If it's a private issue, if it's a public issue, it will get to your private door. We're not small beings. I agree with what Del, Del said. We need to stop playing small. It's not like what one small thing can you do. No, it's what major kick-ass thing can you do with everybody else that you know because this is America. We're the most powerful country on the in mm -hmm. the world and we as citizens need to take responsibility for that. We don't just need small random acts of kindness. We need you huge strategized acts of doing the right thing. Ooh. In 1776, this country was founded to repudiate aristocracy, and we need to repudiate it again. Mm. The American uh, Revolution is an ongoing process. If you stop taking care of your marriage, you'll lose your marriage. If you stop taking care of your health, you'll lose your health. If you stop taking care of your business, you'll lose your business. And if you stop taking care of your democracy, you lose your democracy. It's late, it's the 11th hour, but it's not midnight yet. And I mentioned earlier the difference between being anti-slavery and being an abolitionist. Being anti-slavery means, oh, well, none of us agree with any of this. But you're just not agreeing with slavery, not living in a slave state, not owning a slave yourself, would not of itself have moved the needle for even one slave. But there's a bridge you cross. It's a psychological bridge, it's an emotional bridge, and it's a moral bridge from I don't agree with it to not on my watch. We're all supposed to be loving, but all of us know sometimes love says no. Mm -hmm. Sometimes love says, I saw what you did to my grandparents, and you're not going to do it to my grandkids. That is love. That is fierce. And so none of this namby-pamby love now. None of this like, oh, well, there's just, what can I do? You're a freaking American. And that's what you can do. And every, particularly for the women, I just want to say, to conclude with my vision, okay? What I hold in my heart and which is so possible. Take Yemen for an example. Yemen is an example. The Saudi Arabian women, that, with, that we, what we would do for the sale of $100 billion in arms that then they used to kill those children, or even the fact that we did not react, like you said that, that Cheney said, you let me do it. Where were we? Where were we that they were going to drop 
bombs on these homes of people who could do nothing about it. A country that had done nothing to us. It had done nothing to us in 9-11, had no al-Qaeda, and even if they had weapons of mass destruction, we do business with countries that have weapons of mass destruction every day. Mm. Imagine a world in which, whether it had been the women of Iraq or the people of Yemen or any other country or situation that is possibly or could be damaged by something that has to do with the direct or indirect behavior of the United States. Wouldn't it be amazing if the people of the world could actually reasonably turn to each other and say, we don't have to worry about that because the women of America would never let that happen. Let us imagine that, that the people of America are so morally aligned with our own values that we bring that change into this country and then America will no longer be seen as a whore for money, but back to the moral leadership that is the truth of who we are. Bravo. That's what makes life. We amazing. need a mother Bravo. in the White House. We need a mother in the White House. Bravo. Now I don't know who the lady in the middle. I think she's some movie star. Uh, maybe Sissy Spessick. I don't know. Uh, but what Marion Williamson is saying is absolutely true. Don't you dare think this woman is not a fierce, bold, brash, intelligent, get in your face type of woman. Don't let the guru stuff fool you. Don't let this love stuff fool you. Cause like she said, yes, love is compassion, but love is also defensive and defending. If you really love this country, sure, you're going to be compassionate about people, but you're not going to let not even the federal government just turn this country into a piece of crap. And she's right. All the things that I normally say on this show about a military complex, we call ourselves, we get mad when somebody don't call somebody a terrorist when we're the biggest terrorists of them all. All this stuff, she's saying the same thing. So what I want you to do is look at Marianne Wilson. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I would never t tell you who to vote for, but I'll present to you who these candidates are and give you a chance to take a look at it because not that many people will go in detail into taking a look at these candidates. And that was that is what Meet the Nation is going to be all, all about. And that's going to be a weekly show, end of the week show, Meet the Nation, where we're going to introduce a new person that's doing great things, and then we're going to kind of debunk some of the stuff that happened on Meet the Press and Face the Nation. Um, but she's absolutely right in this context. She's right. And uh, I'm telling you, this lady needs to be on the debate stage. Let me tell you something. She made a statement that um, women would have never did this. <laughs> oh, boy. It doesn't matter. You can't put all women in the butch. You can't do it. Not every woman is the same, just like every man is not the same. I mean, you'd have had Hillary Clinton in that office, man, the warmonger that she is, and her team of warmonger, hungry um, feminists that was on that's, uh, that was backing her up. You know what I mean? Oh, they would have been all for anything, whatever Hillary says, we're for it. What makes Marion Williamson qualified to do what she do? Well, I'm going to let her tell you what makes her qualified. You know, one of the questions people ask me when I tell them I'm running for president is, what makes you qualified? So I'd like to talk about that in terms of the U.S. Constitution. The Constitution says that in order for someone to be qualified to be president of the United States, that person has to be 35 years old or older, that person has to have been born here, and that person has to have lived here for 14 years. If the founders had wanted to say that person needs to be a governor or a senator or a congressman or a lawyer, then they would have. They didn't, because they were leaving it to every generation to determine for itself the skill set that that generation feels is most necessary in order to adequately address the challenges of their time. I think it's worth noting that the author of the Constitution, James Madison, was not a lawyer. He actually studied Hebrew and philosophy at Princeton, and then he read law, but it wasn't his thing. We have this myth of the political expert, and political experts there are, and I have great respect for them. But at the same time, what we think of these days as a qualified political expert, these people are who took us into Vietnam. The qualified political experts are those who took us into Iraq. The qualified political experts created the greatest income inequality since 1929. These qualified political experts have taken us to a point where the environmental peril in our, in our experience today actually threatens the survivability of the human race 50 years from now. 
there are different sets of qualifications. I think we need more than someone who's just qualified because they understand how Washington works. We need someone today who understands how we work. We don't just need political car mechanics because the car has been driven into the ditch. We need someone who is driving this car, who had a sense of what road we were on that got us here and what road we need to get on in order to get us out of the ditch and to move forward. In that sense, I believe that I do have qualifications that are equal to the qualifications of anyone who is running because they understand business or they understand politics as it has been practiced. I believe that in many ways the political mindset that is a carryover from the 20th century is almost a detriment to the kind of expanded thinking that I feel is much more aligned with the possibilities as well as the perils of the 21st century. And I feel that my 35-year career gives me those qualifications. Well, there you have it. She gave you her qualification for president based on the Constitution. It has nothing to do with you holding a freaking office because I have people that, well, they need to run for dog catcher. They need to run for this first. They need to get some experience. Who told you that crap? The Constitution didn't say that. All right. It doesn't matter where you sat in the Senate for 20 years. Sometimes that's the worst thing for you that um, that's that unqualifies you because now most of the time you're bought and paid for by the corporate interest, the military interest, the defense contractors. So come on, that does just like most of these people that's in broadcasting, they're not qualified to do broadcasting. I'm more qualified to do broadcasting because I'm not beholding to anybody. They're beholden to the defense contractors. You know it every time they go to a commercial. So she is very well qualified. Like I said, don't sleep on her because she has a strong women base. And right now, with her dealing with reparations, the way she come out concerning reparations before it became an item on the table she's been talking about, just like Jill Stein, this put her in a position more than anybody to gain the ADOS vote. And that, that voting block is growing and growing and growing. It is not shrinking. It is not shrinking. And yeah, there's a lot of black support for different people, but that you gotta understand, the black support is fractured because American descendants of slaves are not all black, all of the black vote. In this country, there's so many black blocks based on regions, countries, where they came from and um, um, where the ancestors came from. You got the, um, you got the African uh, people that come to this country that's considered part of the black vote. You got the West Indian people that come from, um, that's considered part of the black vote. Uh, you got blacks in um, England. You got blacks all over the world that moved to the United States that are eligible to vote. You think that will make up the entire black vote? But let me tell you something. There is a part of the black vote called American descendant of slave that has taken hold of a narrative that Bernie Sanders had when it came to Medicare for all, $15 hour minimum wage. He put a mandate out there. And his supporters say, if you're not gonna support that, you're not gonna get my vote. Now, the ADOS community put a same type of mandate, but this mandate mean more to them than anything because it's said by professionals that by 2050, the black dollar count is going to dwindle down to zero. And if we don't do anything right now to change that, we are going to become, as Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy say, obsolete. And our power will be deleted. And that's why they're going around saying reparations. And the person that has no problem talking about real true reparation, including a financial um, stipend, a check, it's Marion Wilson. She don't run from it. She don't blow it all off on a um, policy from Congress. No, she get very specific. Not only that, she's not afraid to go to the people who are spearheading that movement. Bernie Sanders have not went to, uh, um, to the ADOS community. Kamala Harris haven't went. Julian Castro say he's for it, but he haven't been down to the people who already been working on this thing for decades. But let me get off that. We'll talk about that kind of last. What I want to do right now is go to her platform.
I want to go to our platform and see what Marianne Williamson is all about. Like I said, you get a chance, go donate to her. She need a certain, she need to hit a certain amount of number. It's not about how much money you donate. It's the fact that you're donating. And right now we would love for you to, I mean, give her a dollar, man. If she can get 60,000 people from different parts of the state to give her a dollar, she's in the debate because she has issues that she's running on it. Now you go to her website and you got her story, where she come from. Um, and look, this is to me, this is a good campaign website because you know who she are and where she came from. You got, um, uh, Mr. Where I came from, Tom about her family lineage. You know, she's, her father was an immigrant, uh, like most people, parents, where her career be began. Then she talked about who am I? What am I now? That was Martin Luther King who said that. Then she goes down why she's running. So you could take some time and go through that. Now let's go to the issues. Now her platform, her, she goes through it just like, just like Tulsi Gabbard. Child advocacy, so she's advocating for children. Climate crisis, so she is for climate change. Now I've been through all this. You go through it. Crime prevention, criminal justice, our democracy being at risk, education, uh, food, gun safety, health care, immigration, LGBTQ rights, mass incarceration, Native American justice, national service, national security, racial reconciliation and healing. Now she went on almost a two year tour, uh, just speaking on this before she ran for office. Reproduction rights, social security, the economy, veterans, women's. So you take time and click on the one um, that you that means the most to you and you'll hear where she stands on this. You know, um, so um, there are the, her platforms. Uh, also got events where she's gonna be at um coming up then you got her videos campaign videos different shows she's been on uh we already went through a call qualification for president listen listen to her about reparations okay i'm not going to talk about that right now but this guy uh he's not ados and what really get me is we have people that are not american descendants of slaves that want to take over the conversation concerning American descendants of slaves. His descendancy is from Africa, where a lot of Africans work to sell us into slavery. So not only are we going after the wealth that we built in this country and never got nothing for it, to me, it may be going after people who actually sold us into slavery. But let's listen to this question, because I'm going to come back to this guy on another episode. Uh, probably going to talk about this guy on the Freedom of Fire episode. So in order to implement this plan, we would have to <clears throat> reallocate that money from somewhere else. So where do you think we can allocate this money from? Well, first of all, you know, it's not a zero-sum game. So, you know, when, when people want to do things like tax cuts for the very, very wealthiest or invasions, war, war, you know, invasions of countries that didn't even do anything to us, nobody asks where they're going to reallocate the money from. The issue of uh, reparations is an issue that speaks to what I was saying before. We need to get real in this country. We need to talk about what's really going on in this country. I don't believe that the average American is a racist. I actually don't. But I do believe that the average American is vastly undereducated about the history of race in the United States. And at the end of the Civil War, there were four to five million slaves in the United States. And General Tecumseh Sherman promised at that time 40 acres and a mule for every former slave family. That money, well, most of the time, that acreage was not given. Even when it was given, most of the time, it, it was uh, taken away. The economic gap, and remember that two and a half centuries of, of slavery was followed by 100 years of what today we would call domestic terrorism. You know, what, what do you call lynchings if not domestic terrorism? What do you call Ku Klux Klan if not domestic terrorism? Full-on institutionalized white supremacy and segregation. 
even though we answered that with the, with the Civil Rights Act that dismantled segregation, the Voting Rights Act that, um, uh, that gave equal rights uh, of voting to black people, even that we've started chipping away at since 2013. We have mass incarceration. We have racial disparity in sentencing. This is not a debt we can afford to delay any longer. The economic restitution for two and a half centuries of slavery followed by 100 years of domestic terrorism. Germany has paid $89 billion to Jewish organizations since World War II. And in 1988, Donald, Ronald Reagan signed the American Civil Liberties Act, where all surviving prisoners from the Japanese internment camps during World War II were paid between twenty dollars and $22,000. It's simply a debt we owe. This country will not heal until we take a serious moral inventory. People, a nation must undergo the same level of deep moral inventory, admission of our character defects. Racism is a character defect. Let's end this. Let's fix this. Let's solve this. Reparations won't end everything, but it will be a profound gift. It implies a mea culpa. It implies a recognition of a debt owed, and therefore it carries not only economic power, but spiritual force. Whatever it costs, it's time to do this. She said, whatever it takes, no matter what it costs, it needs to be done. You can't say we don't have the money because we spend money here, we spend money on there, and, all, and most of it, foolishness. Now, I got to tell you, looking at Marianne Williamson and the way she relays this information is this is not something she just picked up trying to get a vote. She's been talking about this for years. She's dead serious. And you can see it in her eyes, you can see it in her passion that she really believes, by being a spiritual person, that this is a spiritual defect into the wells of this country. It's a cut wound and not doing it is putting salt in the cut wound of America. It needs to be done. And she is serious about it. And that's why I'm telling you, these other candidates think they're going to automatically get the black vote. And I'm letting you know right now, the black vote is at hand right now. No presidential candidate ever went to the general election without garnering a major support of the black vote. And right now, the black people are stronger than ever, especially, especially American descendants. Let me say this, American descendants of slaves. Because we keep saying black and we got to understand all blacks are not together on this. And to some of you people, that's a good thing because you, you, you got your certain people that you're hoping that they can get enough black support so they can win. You got your favorite candidate out there, your messiahs or your uh, messiahs or your maladies. You got them out there and you know who, who you like. Some people like love Tulsi and they, oh, we got to get Tulsi. She's the best. And then you got Bernie and you got uh, Elizabeth Warren. You got all these people. And understand, you got your favorite candidate and don't understand that your favorite candidate uh, may, may be a little, little cautious, maybe a little audit. Some people are out really just want to get the presidency and um, not really listen to the concerns of certain aspects of community. And right now, the black vote wins the primary. It doesn't win the um, general election. It can help win the general election, but um, you know, black vote is not enough in the general election. We've seen that with Andrew Gillum, we've seen that with um, Stacey Abram, uh, we've seen that with, I mean, a lot of people. It's not enough. The independents determine who wins the general, but in the primaries, in the Democratic primary, the black vote is everything. And I'm telling you right now, your favorite candidate will lose black support, regardless he may have, I know some people say he got the best platform in the world, she got the best platform in the world. Right now it's a little more than platform, we applaud the platform, but the American descendant slave, knowing the statistic, they're in crisis mode with their voting. I wish people understand this. We've never caught up, even though the laws are there, we never caught up to that point. Why? Because of this defect in America. Racism, xenophobia, all that stuff, and not making wrongs right, that is a defect in America. And she's trying to say this, and it sounds spiritual, but no, it's an actual policy that's causing a defect in America, and if we don't get rid of these policies, 
or things that were supposed to be done and we never did it, we don't implement this thing, America can continue to dwell away and crumble. Now, I gotta say something about Marion Williamson. She's been, unlike most candidates, she's talking to Antonio Moore. She's talking to Yvette Carnell. I don't know if she talked to uh, uh, Professor uh, Black Truth. I don't know if she talked to, uh, uh, you know, uh, I know she talked to Senator Darity. Matter of fact, there's a video of her having, now the reason I mention these names is because these names I'm talking about right now are the foremost uh, here she is, Reparation Talk with Marion Williamson, William Darity Jr., and Kirsten Mullen. They are one of the foremost experts on the issue of reparations, along with Claude Anderson. And, you know, you, these are the people who you need to get with to understand how this thing is to be done. She knew how it to be done, but Yvette and Antonio Moore corrected her, said, no, the numbers said need to be in the trillions, not in the millions. And she moved up a, a little bit on that. She's flexible. She goes to the community and listen to them and then go forward according to what she's heard. She don't go like Hillary Clinton and point the finger and tell them this is what you need to do. She don't do like Kamala Harris and point the finger and tell black people this is what you need to do. What she did was listen to the black people on what she done as if black people don't can't know more than you. Just cause you hold a position, the black leaders in the community cannot have a better thought than you, go talk to the black authority. Go talk to black. She's doing this. And in this video, I'm not going to go over it because this is an hour and 37 minute long video. Here she is. It's called Reparation Talk with Marion Wilson, William Darity Jr. and Kirsten Mullen. And she goes into the community or she meets with the community and listen and learn and get an understanding. She shows in this video her knowledge about the situation too. She's very educated on this. And she's connecting with people like Dr. San, uh, San, San, uh, William Darity, we call him Sandy Darity. The Darity. National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington. The comments that you wish came on. So, so she's on there with him. I can go uh, to episodes when she was with um, uh, Yvette Carnell. Now, you don't see Bernie Sanders mean with these people. You don't see Tulsi Gabbard mean with these people. Wait, hey, we got some time. Maybe they will. You don't see Elizabeth Warren mean with the experts on this. No, they want to go talk about Sun on Capitol Hill, which is not the place to go and meet with them. And this is her. I already have a career for 35 years. With tone speak, where tone talk, tone I speak. I say whatever. what I believe is, is the truth that needs to be said. But what can and they did they look, look paid when there is a uh a now like i said you guys got to go through this yourself be psychotic um peace because this, um also a, a belief in white and white america that black people are choosing not to actually activate that money well i didn't i'm not going there and nor do i think it's only uh, the job of black wealth to address the issue that you're talking about i think that's america's job and and I would dispute the idea that there aren't black billionaires because I've met a few of them. No, I'm not saying and there that aren't. They don't, that they can't make their cash liquid. Come on, Antonio. No, no, no. I'm saying that there's only, to get in the top 5% of black families, you only <clears throat> need 350 hard. I think one of the great failures of America is that it hasn't really told, you talked about history. It hasn't told the reality of the present. It hasn't told white America. You have almost all the wealth. Now, again, you guys got to go and watch these things. A, a terrible disservice has been done, not only to m many people who are immigrants, but to the foundational principles of this country. Uh, George Bush, a Republican president, spoke out just in the last couple of days about the value and the importance of immigration. 
I'm an immigration lawyer's daughter. I'm an immigration lawyer's sister. I grew up going to the ceremonies where, where immigrants are given the opportunity to become citizens. The truth of the matter, what I saw as a child is true. The, the, the average immigrant, in order to become a citizen of the United States, has to study more American civics, more American government, knows more about our Declaration of Independence, and knows more about our constitutional principles than we do. They're the ones sometimes who are exhibiting their lifeblood, and this has always been true, coming to a new country in order to have a better life. That's America. That is our characterological DNA. We want better for ourselves. We want better for our children. And when people like our grandparents and our great-grandparents, unless you're a descendant of a slave or the descendant of a Native American whose, whose people were here for thousands of years before the, uh, the European settlers came, this is what our grandparents came here to do. All four of my grandparents came here from Russia for a better life and made it here. So I, I, I feel that that, that that value, that democratic value, is, it must be protected at all costs. We did not have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. This problem was made up. We have some issues that we have to handle, but border security, the main issues of border security are at our ports. The main issues of border security have to do with what might be coming in with submarines. The real issues of border security have to do with much more serious things than just some poor woman trying to get over here with her child. That has to do with even, some experts would argue, that the possibilities of nuclear bombs. That's where we should be putting our border security um, efforts, our border security money. This is all, this is a terrible illusion and canard that has been, uh, that has been created, this anti-immigrant fervor, this demonization of, of immigrants. And I hope that when this unfortunate episode of American history comes to a close, that we, the American people, will reclaim the goodness of our honor of the immigrants who seek a better life here. All right, there you go. Her talking about immigrations. Now, going back to what I'm saying, I got one more video and then we're done. Looking at Marion Williams and knowing where she came from, like I said, I was familiar with her before she ran. I was a pretty much a listener, avid listener, a fan of her books, her teachings, and things like that. Now, I don't go all the way into because some people, I don't agree with everything they teach. So I do have some disagreements with Marion Wilson uh, as a Christian. Um, there is some things that she may talk about this anti-Christian, but I don't throw her out because there's a lot more that I agree with her than I disagree with her, just like I do with some politicians. Also, there's some things that that's a non-starter with me. I mean, if you're, if you're right now in this case, uh, if you're not going to support reparations, it's a non-starter with me, man, because I've looked at the data and I know according to data where the black dollar and the black culture, there, especially the American descendant slave culture is going to be. What you didn't really hear when she made that speech um, just now is that the immigrants come in here knowing more about a country than we do because we never were taught, um, was forced to be taught what it takes to make it in this country. We were just throwing the education, that's it. A lot of immigrants come in here already highly educated. They come in here and getting things that you know, so it's, it's it's a long story. So you gotta study up on that stuff. Um, but things have uh, this reparation thing will make it more fair. Now, getting off the reparation, that's one thing about Marion Wilson Williamson that gets a check. She was for four, she was for it before she became president. She's very passionate and uh, animate about it. While she's running for office, she does not take no shame in going to meet with the experts on it. She don't assume she's the expert, and she really don't believe the experts are going to come from Capitol Hill. She really believes the experts are in the community. So she go to people like Dr. Um, Sandy Darity. She goes to um, uh, Antonio Moore. She go to Yvette Carnell, and she, she's probably going to go be talking to uh, uh, Professor um, Black Truth and all that kind of stuff. She's probably going to do that, Okay. And, um, and the different other leaders that are in, in Claude Anderson. She's going to go to the expert. And that's what I'm saying with every other candidate. Don't come talk to me with your funky baby bonds. That's great, but that's a policy. That's not reparation. Don't come to me talking about this uh, Lyft Act. That's great, but that's not reparation. Don't come talking about no thousand dollars a month. Um, that's that's man. That's a welfare check. That ain't that ain't that ain't reparations. All these things are good. Do that, but that ain't going help the African the American descendants of slaves and them fighting this time limit they have 
and wealth. It's just like fighting that time limit we have when it comes to our environment. There's a date that if we don't get to this, fix this thing by this date, then it's going to be some issues. Same thing in the black community. We have that same urgency. If we don't take care of this by this time, then things might not. Now me, I'm optimist. I believe in faith. I believe in prospering. I believe in conquering and dominating, but everybody don't believe that like I do. So I got to still fight for them too. And I'm not going to be able to get that message of faith, prosperity, conquering, uh, walking in dominion and everything uh, as a human being on this earth. That message I can't get out. I try to get it out on my other channel, uh, Winner With Love With Bobby, but I can't reach America like that. So I still got to fight for those who don't get that message. So that's the urgency on that. Plus, her policies are progressive. Her policies are progressive. And another huge point is she understand uh, from a spiritual aspect, what this country has done, what this country is currently doing, and what we need to do to stop this and go forward in peace, love, um, honor, devotion, true prosperity, integrity, the whole nine yards, what this country is really supposed to be about, and we are far from, our, far from it. Now, one more video, and then I'm done. in the D.C. Democratic Party. <clears throat> I guess. Now, your campaign promises to focus on crime prevention and educational equity, two things that I feel are inextricably linked. How will you negotiate across the aisle to ensure that not just the school, but the community has the proper support to sustain and prosper <clears throat> no matter their social economic status? We are the only country that bases so much of our educational funding on property taxes which is absolutely ridiculous. That means that if a child wins a birth lottery and they go to a school, their parents were, are financially privileged, then they are liable to get a very good public education in America. But it shouldn't be that if you, if you do not have financially advantaged parents, that you do not. Every school in the United States should be a palace of learning, every school. We have millions of American children who go to school every day in schools that do not even have the adequate school supplies with which to teach an eight-year-old to read. If an eight-year-old cannot read by, by the age of eight, if they can't read, the chances of high school graduation are drastically diminished and the chances of incarceration is drastically increased. We have millions of American children living in this chronic trauma, living in America's domestic war zones, where the PTSD of a, of a, a returning veteran from Afghanistan or Iraq, psychologists tell us, is no more severe than the PTSD of these children. We should rescue these children no differently than we would rescue them from a natural disaster. And that's why when I'm president, we will have a massive realignment of resources in the direction of children 10 years old and younger. We need a United States cabinet level department of children and youth. If you want to see the economic potential of this country, if you want to see the economic vibrancy of this country, if you want to see the entrepreneurial spirit of this country, you go to any kindergarten in any neighborhood in this country. And these children are full-on citizens of the United States, and I will be their president. One final question from Duvalier Malone. He's an author and community activist right here in Washington. Duvalier? Thank you. In today's hostile political environment, can a presidential bid be supported by love? If so, do you think love can win the White House? Well, first of all, I think it's the only thing that can win the White House. I think far more people in this country love than hate. Far more. And that's true in this world. The problem we have today is that those who hate, hate with conviction. And conviction is a force multiplier. Those who hate today, those who fear, they are effective, they are organized, and they are convicted. Those of us who love now need to become convicted and organized and strategized. We need to do more than small random acts of kindness. We need huge strategized acts of doing the right thing. Look at terrorism. We know that what hate, how powerful it is when it is turned into a political force, but it's nothing compared to how powerful love is when it's turned into a political force. That's what I'm trying to do with my campaign. That's the message I'm giving. What we need to do is the right thing. We need to rescue these children. We need to pay reparations. We need to wage peace. We need to purify the heart of a nation, just like we need to purify our own hearts. And then when we do that, when we're honest about the darkness we need to deal with, we will get to such incredible light. And we will have a new birth of freedom 
as Abraham Lincoln said, there is nothing compared to what this country is going to do when we release the truth of who we are. So you're talking about love. That's obviously your, yep. your calling card and, and, and the, 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 the force behind your books. How do you do that in a debate with Donald Trump? Well, first of all, <clears throat> let's not pretend that he would debate me, Donna. He would insult me. He would bait me, but he would not debate me. So on the stage so, with Donald Trump. I, you know, what do you do with a child? How do you treat a psychic? <laughs> I would not go in resp uh, expecting a reasonable conversation. I would be open to a reasonable conversation. I would not go in expecting one. My conversation is with the American people. I think we're so exhausted. I don't think the American people need me to tell them who Donald Trump is or what Donald Trump is. I want to tell the American people what America could be and what it will be if they elect me president. Marianne Williamson, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. So there you have it, Marianne Wilson, uh, Williamson, and um, very interesting character, fireball, a firebrand, very smart, intelligent. I, I mean, we say that about all people. No, listen, <laughs> she's smart and she's intelligent. You know, she didn't need Washington, D.C. to make her. She made herself through love. She's a love guru. I'm what they consider a love guru. I teach on love on my other channel. I go different places nationally and speak on love. I'm currently working on a book called Born to Love. I'm working on a little mini book called The Five Stages of Love. I am a love advocate, just like Osama bin Laden was a hate advocate, just like white supremacists are hate advocates. I'm a love advocate. Martin Luther King taught love, but yet at the same time, his love talk drove him to activate a different type of love, and that's called righteous indignation. And that's Marion Williamson. She got righteous indignation. I believe Tosi Gary got righteous indignation. But this lady, you talking about Bernie's close to Martin Luther King, Tosi close on that. Let me tell you something. You talking about this lady. <laughs> She just got off a, 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 her own uh, interview with Andrew Yang. She's willing to talk to other candidates and get to know them. She's willing to go to the black community and get to know the needs of the black community. I, I don't see any other candidates that actually sitting here meeting up with other candidates and having a hash out, a discussion, or, or, or a debate on policies. She's done that with Andrew Yang and she'll do that with anybody. Again, I haven't seen any president can presidential candidate took the time out to go into the black community and get uh, understanding and listen to them, not even Kamala Harris or Cory Booker. It's what I believe America is. No, she said, I'm going to talk to America. And I'm going to pump them up on who they are. And I'm going to listen to them. And she listens. So she's not your normal candidate. Don't you dare sleep on her. I'm telling you right now, when it comes to the white women vote, she'll get more white women vote than anybody running because they know her. And I'm talking about across the board. I'm not just talking about Democrats. I'm talking about you got Republican women that love her too. A lot of them didn't even know she's running as a Democratic. And they're still not dwelling in support for her. They got her back. Now, when it comes to men, men tough. Men just sometimes we're idiots. Take a lot for us to get us to win over. But she got a lot of checks in my book. And I went over those checks. She don't mind going to the black community. The proof is in the pudding with the videos. Dr. Sandra Darity, Antonio Moore, uh, I mean, not afraid. Go to the Breakfast Club, not afraid. Now, everybody go to Breakfast Club, but she's not afraid to sit with her contenders, people who run in for office and have a discussion with her. She's not afraid. She's not afraid. She's not afraid to go to different aspects of the community. She's not afraid. She's willing to take a love fight to this country. She's willing to do whatever whatever that America has done wrong, she is willing to do what's right. She feels it's a must in order to fix America. It's not a policy with her, it's a mandate with her. There you go, there was Marion Wilson. I introduced to you probably a whole different side of Marion Williamson that you didn't know. Uh, but that's what I'm here for and that's what Meet the Nation is all about and i want to thank you for this time it's been very long um but hey uh, we finally got it done i'll talk to you later it's robert brown uh with the rob report meet the nation edition sunday april the 21st